Hey everyone. I'm Jill. And I'm Rhino. And we love bourbon. In addition to drinking it, we also wanted to learn about it and share that info with you. So come join us in The the Bourbon Bourbon Study. The Bourbon Study. Why? What, What? What is this? What does that pretentious <laughs> name even mean? It sounds here? very pretentious. The idea is that uh, my friend Jill here is um, the person I would say in my life that knows the most about bourbon. I'm, I'm an expert by no stretch, mm. but I have found an interest in it uh, in the past couple of years, done some traveling related to bourbon and all of that. So I'm starting to get a lot deeper into the lore and mythology. I think one becomes an expert when they travel related <laughs> to the topic that they like. But <laughs> but I do understand what you say here. But I yeah. know very little about it. But I have really been wanting to get into like classic cocktails. And I feel like when I think of a classic cocktail, the first thing I think of is an old fashioned. And old fashioned is made with bourbon. I think that's where we should start, though, because I have this question. I don't know if you know the answer, but all bourbon is whiskey or all whiskey is bourbon? So all bourbon Mm -hmm. is whiskey, Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. not all whiskey is bourbon. So what does it take to be bourbon? So there's a couple requirements. I am cheating a little bit on Google because I was like, well, I know most of that. For bourbon to call itself bourbon, the mash, the mixture of grains and all that has to be at least 51% corn. It also has to be distilled at no more than 160 proof. So it can't go into the barrel higher than 160. What does proof mean? I know this is, I, I am a drinker. I don't, sometimes I pretend like I know what ABV and proof mean. Like, but you go, you look at it and you go, mm. So it's the alcohol by volume. So mm. like it, per one measurement, how much percent of that is alcohol versus how much is water and other compounds, okay. corn, rye, yeah. whatever. So the ABV is the percentage, and then the proof is basically just that times two. So that's how you calculate the proof. Like if it's 50% ABV, it's 100 proof, roughly. What's the point of that? To sound fancy. <laughs> I don't know. I guess we'll, well, that's we'll a, Google that. That's a, I was going to say, that's a, you know who solves that <laughs> There's problem? There's a couple more Google. requirements, though, we have to get back to. Why is bourbon bourbon? Yeah. Why is it not whiskey? Must be distilled in only, and this is very important, virgin, brand new, mm. never touched by the hands of a woman. <laughs> a, a, a man, fine. Yeah. No women. <laughs> <laughs> virgin, brand new oak, American oak barrels charred because the industry at the time of prohibition the the like lumberjacks and the craftsmen needed work so it was a way for that's interesting yeah it was a way for the government to like create jobs by making mandating that bourbon had to be oak so they had to make a brand new barrel out of oak set it on fire set it on fire on the inside and then the the liquid goes in you can use the barrels for other things they don't just like trash all these oak barrels after the first use but they can never be used to make bourbon ever again so it has to be charred on the inside because that's where that's what distinguishes it from just being moonshine because you you know it Mm. goes in clear as moonshine yeah comes out with all that delicious wood so there's no no bourbon bathtubs for anybody nobody's making bourbon in the bathtub and it can have no additives at all. It can have water to bring down the proof if they want to like adjust the proof a little yeah. bit. But other than water, it can have no no flavors. The minute you make it peach flavored whiskey, really? it's whiskey. So like um, a whiskey that I do enjoy. Oh, oh, I see right there. I already just said it. It was whiskey, not bourbon. I was going to say um, really popular right now is the screwball, is the peanut that butter. Is but whiskey. that is whiskey. You okay, interesting. Okay, so bourbon is not flavored. No, cannot be flavored. By any In an additive, yes. The, but flavors the, can be picked up from the, from the charring the, and the whatnot yeah. and everything. Interesting. It, from the really level of charring, from yeah. the like the way it's stored in the hmm. in the barrel house, all that stuff. Yeah, that's really interesting. And one last thing is that it cannot be higher than 125 proof. So that's why, like, you got your moonshine or your 151 rum. You can't have bourbon that's higher than 100. This has me questioning what rubbing alcohol is. I thought I figured 100 <laughs> was 100. I feel like we're at these speakers go to 11. Yeah, I was like, we, like saw, we saw a moonshine that was 153. And I was like, that sounds serious. Where did bourbon get its name from? Do you know this? I feel like you were going to tell me before we started. I was. Please tell me now. I don't know. <laughs> so I, I actually didn't know either. I had to Google it. Like you do. One of my favorite brands of whiskey 
and uh, Bourbon is Angel's Envy, and they actually have the story of how Bourbon became Bourbon. It's all speculative because nobody wrote this stuff down back in the 1800s. So they said the name Bourbon originated in New Orleans as popularized oh. by Bourbon Street. Right? Les Les Two men who were brothers came over from Cognac, France. Hmm. And Cognac's very expensive at this point. And so they said, hey, we want to win over these French-leaning residents of New Orleans with... This whiskey from Kentucky, because we landed in Louisville, which is like right up the Mississippi River. Yeah. And so they said, hey, when we bring, we're going to take this new spirit that we just found in Louisville. We're going to float it down the river because the time in the river, in the barrels on the boat, is like the perfect aging time to get down to New Orleans. These brothers from Cognac, France, believed that if they aged the whiskey in these oak barrels, that mm-hmm. it would taste more like cognac. So they were kind of doing a con, almost. Like, oh, hey, yeah. we can't afford cognac. We can't get it here in the States. So we're going to make something we'll make that's something similar that you, we, to that. We can pass off. As. Exactly. Yeah, interesting. And so they float it on down the river, and they get it down to Bourbon Street, and then they the New Orleans revelers actually are the ones that began to identify that spirit that came from these French brothers as bourbon because they were getting it down on the street. That is crazy. I thought Bourbon Street was named after bourbon. That's so... It's the other way around. Yeah, that's so crazy. Bourbon is named after the street. That's funny. What does bourbon mean then? Is it just somebody's name? We're on a journey. See, there are so many questions I have about bourbon and I feel like it honestly can be a very intimidating thing. I want to be able to make like a classic cocktail. I like being able to make ones that I think are better at home. Then you like go and spend $23 on at a bar. Oh yeah. What's interesting is I was visiting my friend who lives in Milwaukee and like old fashions are not necessarily the same all over the place because theirs I think had like soda in it or something. There's a lot of variations. Obviously you see a lot of popularity as we approach holiday times. There's like, oh, here's your cranberry old fashioned. There's your maple syrup one. And those are all great, but they aren't the original official like yeah. plain version of that. But just like any good recipe for anything, pasta, cake, whatever, you you get that base recipe, you get really good at it, and then you can start to add in those maple flavors or add in orange, yeah. add in cherry, and that's what all those are. Well, let's let's for. do it. Oh my gosh, how do, they're just like right here. How convenient. For just general entertaining, people coming over or you're making something for yourself you don't want to spend a lot it's just like a weeknight treat yourself yeah. while you're winding down after work i always recommend to people the evan williams bottle of bond now i know people are gonna like scoff at that and be like evan williams that's like jim beam and jack daniels and these like it sounds like cheap bottom shelf stuff you've told me before uh Price is not always an indicator of your taste, right? It, you could, you could, it, it's a palate based thing. I so. say drink what you like. I was very like anti what I consider the I, bottom shelf name. I would literally just go in and be like, oh, get a name based on hearing it repeatedly, not Correct. knowing whether it was good or not. And so um, I visited the Evan Williams experience in Louisville and they sampled this like on your way in. We will we will at some point also go over tasting. I think we've we've got a yeah. couple of things set up where we're thinking about doing like a uh, like a blind taste test to figure out if we one Jill could probably guess exactly which one it is, but also if I can point out and be like is that more expensive? Is that less expensive? Which one but, do I like the best? And that's which doesn't like matter, a good you know? like if for you, another video. If you go to a restaurant and they have or like a bourbon bar or whiskey bar Get a flight because it's an accessible way to learn what you like. What yeah. are your flavors? Are you a rye a person? Idea. Are you a corn person? Are you like into more spice or into more fruit? And you're not going to know those things until you just get out and start tasting them. But of course, like it's not accessible to buy a bottle of like $70 no, liquor God, every no, time no. you're like, also oh, when you don't even, that. yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Well, let's get what, what's in, what's in an old fashioned? What do we need for a classic old it's, fashioned? It's very simple. We use, Bourbon, mm-hmm. simple, syrup, simple syrup, and Angostura bitters. Uh, what What is their purpose in the drink? It's just so that you get like a wide range of the different, like, you know, on your tongue, you've got yeah. like sweet, salty, they open spicy, up the flavor. all of those things. And so you're getting the, the full range of those 
Interesting. Flavors all in one sip. Okay. So you've got like your spice from the liquor, you've got your sweet from the sugar, and you've got your like bitter notes. I think I've got an idea for another episode all about bitters now too. Hey. And we'll call it. Yeah, there's an infinite bitters. amount of bitters. So like I said, Angostura is like the original classic. It's got, it's got that label that's like looks like it's on too high. That's it looks their like signature. They, they like bought it wrong and labeled it wrong. Yeah. That's their thing. These three things. That's all we need to make the drink. And then a couple little garnishy the, doodas. Accoutrements. Accoutrements. Um, we always use uh, like a Luxardo style cherry which is the darker dark cherry type yeah. of flavor. And then uh, orange peel. Just for garnishing you squeeze a little bit of the oils from the peel into the drink to yeah. so get some of those aromas of the fruit but you're not necessarily, you're not like juicing it and putting the juice in. Yeah. I, I feel like glassware is important. Glassware right? is important. What kind of glass do you think you should use for an old fashioned? A rocks glass? A rocks glass! Conveniently. Over here. And then also, um, so... Fancy cubes. Fancy ice. Let's talk about fancy ice yeah. for a minute. Obviously clear ice is like a super bougie thing. I don't care about if the ice looks clear. Damn. I like it to be functional and yeah. reliable and quick. And um, so we have these ball ice makers. Uh, which and, uh, are and if you don't great. have them, it's okay. But I, because I <laughs> yeah, have two can, of these two. The but... reason, so the reason you use a big, silly looking cube is so it's low melt. Yeah. So you don't dilute your drink and the flavors of your drink as you sip it slowly. It gives you like a longer time window for enjoying your drink without it being watered down. If you use smaller cubes, you've got all that surface area. I was going to say science. Watery drink. Science. science. <laughs> <laughs> So what are the proportions we're looking at for the drink here? Okay, so you want to do two ounces of your bourbon. Mm -hmm. Always. Doesn't matter what brand or what proof. If you want it to be a stronger drink, just get stronger bourbon. So this is 100 proof, so we use two ounces of that. We use a half ounce of your syrup, so I do one pump. And then like two or three dashes boop, boop, of, the bitters. of the bitters. So we are going to do... Four ounces, because we're making one for both of us. Look at this fancy shaker she's got here. It's got a little little measuring thing right in the cup there. I struggled for many years with a garbage shaker and uh, recently got this one. It's an Indiegogo project called Elevated Craft. And so uh, it's totally insulated, no melt on the inside of nice. the ice. So then we do two pumps, because there's two of us. Boop, boop, boop. About one, two, three, four. There we go. Okay. And that's it. That's it. Then we shake. It's like we're demystifying it, I feel like, because it seems like, it's, oh, old fashioned, $32 yeah. for this drink. It must be so. And not something that's served everywhere, but seems super basic. There we go. We don't drink it yet, right? No, we don't drink it yet because we get a garnish, right? Every sensible yeah. person with a cocktail has a garnish. It's sometimes the hardest thing is the wait for me. Just take the shaker and put it in my mouth. Mm. Yeah, so see, you can sort of see how dark yeah. these cherries are. We need an orange. We need the skin. We're gonna Hannibal Lecter this orange. Bite its face right off. Um, so you just take like a little... This is the fancy part. See, this is the part that I'm always intimidated about. This okay, skin. so you, you peel this little skin part and you just want to get yeah. the skin part. A little no, bit of like, the rind. A little bit of the rind. No uh, actual things. fruit part. Yeah. Now we're going to do a little curly cue. And we're going to like twist it so you can see like, see there's like little bits of oils that come out. And you can do like boop, boop, I was gonna, I've seen glass. people do that before. Like they and do then, there you fancy, go. fancy, schmancy. Cheers. That is a delight. That's delicious. Don't I, take our word for it. Yeah. Go buy some stuff. I mean, so do this yourself. <laughs> that is how to make an old fashioned. That is what I've I've learned some things today about bourbon. Thank you, Jill. And thank um, you, Internet. Yeah, thank you, Internet. <laughs> thank We're you. still learning. We're yeah. Learning. Be on this journey with us because I think it's an interesting topic. I think that we can demystify yeah. and make it not just accessibility for the mustachioed yeah. men. Yeah. <laughs> We're coming for you, mustachioed men. Yeah. And if you've got a mustachio and you still like it. I'm happy. Every week we're gonna do, we'll do whatever video we do, we're gonna have some sort of bourbon tasting, mixed drinks, all that sort of stuff. We're gonna continue to learn about this. This will be our journey. That's why we call it the bourbon study. We'll compare and contrast yeah. some different expressions and some different flavors and maybe some recipes, some food treats. Mm, stuff. Yes, I think, yeah, we're Who gonna- Who doesn't like coordinating snacks? You can get people out there that are a little hoity-toity, kind of about it and it, it shouldn't be that way. Bourbon is a drink for 
all people, I think. And I think it's just about finding that accessibility and hopefully we can we can all do that together. So thank you everybody for watching and joining us on this journey today. We'll be back with another video, um, but we're gonna go so we can enjoy these. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up button. Please don't be afraid to leave comments in here. Any questions, clearly Jill is gonna know the answers to some of these uh, more than I, but also recommendations, yeah. recipes, maybe drinks that you wanna see us make. Cause I, one of my favorite things to do with Jill is to say, hey, I want a drink to go with this thing. Like I'm or gonna watch this movie. Or you'll be in the mood for something and you'll be like, you know what I really want? A drink that tastes like a peanut butter sandwich. Yes, peanut butter sandwich. I'll be like, I'm feeling very like, around a campfire today what can we come up with so it's there's lots to do lots to come up with so thank you everybody out there for watching and we'll see you next time